Did you procrastinate doing your required reading? Did you think it was due in four weeks, but actually it's due tomorrow? This is the last minute guide to Fahrenheit 451. Let's start with the title. Fahrenheit 451, the temperature at which paper burns without an ignition source. This is alluding to the fact that there will be a lot of book burning in it. The firemen of the store burn down houses and books. Now the characters. The narrator is a cool cat called Guy Montag, who is actually just a regular guy and fireman. He does his duties. Then is his wife Mildred. She's so far into the ideals of society and she almost tries to kill herself by overdose and she doesn't even remember it the next day. Next is Fire Captain Beatty. He is a major douche and bad guy of the story. He uses manipulation and literary quotes to confuse Montag a lot. Clarice is a 17 and insane teenage girl. She is the changing point in Montag's life. She gets him to question life and existence and his meaning in being a fireman. She disappears quickly after we get to know her. We don't know exactly what happened to her, as Mildred is the one who said she maybe died in a car accident, but doesn't remember for sure. About halfway through the book, we meet Faber. Montag met Faber in the park years ago reading books, but didn't turn him in. And he even had some spy gear that he gives Montag. Near the end, we meet the book people. The book people are clean shaven and eloquent hobos living in the woods. Granger is one of them, and he loves to give Montag advice on how to leave an impact on the world. This book is divided into three parts. The first part, the hearth and the salamander. The hearth is kind of like a fireplace, and the salamander is the insignia of the fireman. This is showing how fire is a major symbolism throughout the book. Now the plot! You have Montag, a fireman, who meets the eccentric Clarice. She asks him a lot of intrusive questions, but he doesn't seem to mind and goes along with it. After he talks to Clarice, Montag goes home and finds Mildred, who overdosed on pills. He calls the medics and they bring two machines that pump up the blood and gunk out of her. Montag chats with Clarice some more. Oh, also there's this hound. It's not really actually a dog, but more of a machine, spidery thing. That Montag is paranoid that it doesn't like him. Back to the story, the firemen go to burn a house that has illegal books, but Montag steals one of the books from the collection, and an old lady doesn't leave the house and they have to burn her alive. That absolutely messed up Montag, and he thinks, there must be something in books. Things we can't imagine to make a woman stay in a burning house. There must be something there. You don't stay for nothing. And so Montag is having an existential crisis and calls in sick. But Beanie comes to Montag's house and tries to confuse him. He tells Montag why people started disliking books. Minorities felt like they were being discriminated against, so they would burn the books that they did not like. Beanie knows that Montag stole a book, and so does Mildred, because she accidentally finds it under his pillow. Then Montag told Mildred his pile of books that apparently he's been stockpiling. What? Part two, the sieve in the sand. A sieve is that. When Montag was a little kid, this jerk boy told him that if he filled it with the sand, then he could get a dime. This is a parallelism, a Montag of the present trying to remember large chunks of information from the books but not succeeding and it's making him very frustrated. Mildred and Montag are reading through these books and Montag is going a little crazy. He then goes to Faber's house and they chat about books for a little bit and Faber gives him the cool little spy gear to spy on the firemen. Montag goes home and finds Mildred and her friends casually talking about the war as if it is a TV show. He reads some poetry to them but they flip out and leave. While Montag is at work, Mildred calls calls to the firehouse and tells him that he has illegal books. This part ends at Montag arriving at his house. Part 3, Burning Bright. There can be a figurative and alliterative meaning to this. The literal meaning being Montag's house on fire and the war going on and burning the city. Or the figurative, which is Montag's old life going up into flames. Montag is forced to burn down his own house with a flamethrower. After Montag does this, Beanie finds out that Montag has the super secret spy gear with Faber and he threatens that he'll trace it back to Faber, so Montag burns him alive with the flamethrower. Montag knocks out the other fireman and the hound starts to go after him, but he burns it with a flamethrower as well. He's running as fast as he can away. Montag goes out into the woods and finds the book people and while they're talking about books and philosophy, a bomb explodes the city he was just in. Montag is overridden with guilt but he realizes that he can make a difference in other people by the knowledge he's learned. Some intellectual discussion questions you could ask could be, is it plausible that Fahrenheit 451 society could actually happen today? Why does Montag find such value in books? Why do people find books dangerous? Is Mildred really ignorant to the problems, or does she just pretend not to know? Was Montag justified in burning Beatty? Is it better to be aware or ignorant? Which one makes people more happy? Should that make a difference? Thank you for watching this quick guide to Fahrenheit 451. I hope it helped you, and I hope that you have a great day.